<laughs> All right, guys. What's up? What's up? Jason Payne, host of the Sexy Business Status Podcast. I feel very weird right now because I'm leaning left and normally I lean right. I made him switch seats yeah, so normally that he would feel uncomfortable. I'm sitting in the uh, other chair. So nor I sit there because several reasons, but one of them is there so I can see who's in the room <laughs> or who's in the hallway. So I don't know who that is and uh, who, yeah, it's weird. It's weird. It's okay. You're welcome. I'll be okay. This is kind of like, this is kind of fun. <laughs> I'll face this way, I guess. Um, so I want to hop on with you guys and uh, have a little husband and wife convo. But I want to start off with our push-up push-up challenge. Do you know how many days you've been doing it? I don't. I don't remember what weekend you started. I'm going to find out. Oh, okay. I'm curious, though. But um, so talk to us about the, the push-up game, why we're doing it, how long you've been doing it, and benefits, pros and cons of doing it. Um, you, I don't even know why you did it, but you put a challenge out to the team at state 48 to do a hundred pushups a day till mm -hmm. the end of the year. And you'd give them a thousand bucks to whoever completed it. Yep. Um, and so out of guilt, I don't know, obligation. <laughs> did I, I, did I, even, ask, did I even ask you to do it? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's how it started for me, but it, we started like the weekend before I went to Alaska. So mm -hmm. mid August, probably. Um, but yeah, it was a hundred a day and you had, it, when we started, it was one accountability post in the group thread. You had to post one video of right. a batch. You, of the, you, the, so you don't you have, have to do a hundred in a row. Oh, sorry. Right. You don't have to do a hundred in a row, but you have to do a hundred a day. And just keep checking in that you got them done. But um, it's been good. It's been annoying at times because I won't do them until, you know, 10 o'clock at night. And I lay in bed and I'm like, suck, I still got to do 100 push-ups. Yeah, isn't that but crazy? It's been nice. Why do, why do people do that, though? Like, I, I, I don't say I've mastered that, but, like, I, I'm so over that because it just hurts and I don't want to do it. How do we? How do you overcome something like that? What waiting till the end of the day? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, so I've told people all the time. So there's people apart from uh, State 48 Roofing that have done the done the push-ups, and they're doing them right now. Like Nate Palmer's doing them, yeah. Aaron Jess is doing them, uh, uh, Prieto's doing them, a couple other guys. And they're doing hundred. Uh, Nate uh, Nate Martin's doing them. I think the Gecko guys are doing them, but. Like it's a hundred, so you break it up into twenty fives. Cause you do more. I mean, you do more than twenty five. It starts to burn pretty good. And um, I don't know anybody that's doing more than 50 in a, at a time. We've already been to 425s, right? Yeah. Like, if you do 25 when you, right when you wake up, 25. I, I see it as more like just keep your blood flowing, the energy flowing throughout the day. Right. But like, if you do 25 right when you wake up, you do 25. We have our morning calls at 830. So I do them either right before or right after, right? Yeah. What? I'm just laughing at you because you don't care who's watching you when you do them. Like you did them on the airplane on yeah. the way to Florida, literally in the aisle of the airplane. I did. True and story. And people were looking at him like, what the heck is this freak doing? Dakota, remind me. I'll send you that video. I, you can post, I was post one it of put, those people that was like, what is this freak doing? Um, but like for me, it's still not, I don't know. Like even if I go to the park, I'm like, oh, I got to go do them in the bathroom stall because I don't want people staring at me and thinking, who's this crazy person randomly doing push-ups? That's funny. Um, but I've also noticed, you know, like I can do them faster now. I can do more in a bunch and I can do them faster. I right. definitely notice it in my arms, but it's. Sure. Well, that's been something you've been really working on recently, right? Is getting your arms, getting more toned and more yes. defined. I feel like I don't know how to work this you're either. Good. Is that better? Yeah, you're good. So now you're I can good. actually look at you. Yeah, okay. you're doing great. Instead of like doing this. Little yeah. Thing. Um, but yeah, it's because you do 25 right when you wake up, 25. Before and yeah, I'll do them. I'll do them wherever. I'll do them at a table. I'll do them in an airport. It doesn't matter to me because at the end of the day, one people just start laughing. Yeah. Or did I do it where the whole team stopped? Or didn't wasn't I didn't in one stop too, but that's not where people people stopped. Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. So I go to Dairy Queen. I take my kids. Uh, they did some good. They made good choices or whatever. And uh, I took them to Dairy Queen on the golf cart. And um, and most of my littles will do them with me. Yeah. Right. They see me doing those. Just like randomly start doing them, and they're really funny when they do them. Like Oakley did it, but I grabbed two of the, like the center. What, what do you call those things? The Ottoman. Ottomans. Mm -hmm. I grabbed two Ottomans and started doing them. So Oakley literally grabs two chairs and starts doing push-ups. And Dairy Queen, it's not very big. Yeah, that one's. And really you can see everybody. You can see all the employees. They can see you. 
and we order the ice cream. I'm like, hey, in order to get your ice cream, you have to do push-ups. So sure enough, I Remy, Oakley, yeah. and Nixon. I was with Cash at practice. And you had Cash. Okay, so yeah, the three, the three youngest, and we're and we're just going, and and I do forty push-ups literally in the middle of Dairy Queen, right? And I I do it there. It's it's fun. I I'm so like numb to people making fun of me or like making, I don't say cat calls, but making what do you call that? Like making just like the awkward comments, the awkward. Uh, just looks, I guess. I just don't care. It doesn't doesn't bother me. It doesn't phase me. But um, yeah, just doing them. And now I'm I'm starting to do them. Like I said before, I was only doing twenty five, maybe thirty at a time. I, I can do forty. Uh, I can do thirty five at a time with my vest on, which is thirty pound vest. Yeah. I can do a minimum forty, and then normally I stop. Just but it's kind of cool because as you get going and get stronger, um, you only have to do thirty, or, or if you do forty, you only have to do three sets. Right. Right, and you're done. Yeah. Right. And um, it's a hundred, but I feel like if I only do a hundred now, I feel like I'm almost cheating myself. Like my body is now like, okay, you've hit that bar. So now you have to do more. You feel that yet or no? No. You don't no. Feel- <laughs> You're like, no, nope, don't feel that at all. Time. Pounce like, off. Once you hit a hundred, nobody cares how many more you can do, Jason. There you go. I'm okay. just kidding. Some people think it's awesome. I'm going to stay at my 100 and just try and get more from my toes. But you're doing like 50 at a time. Yeah. I mean, assisted. I'm from my knees, but how many how many unassisted can you do at a time? Five to ten, but last year I couldn't do any, so that's good for me. So you went from zero to doing five to ten. It helped to lose forty extra pounds that I was holding. This on chick to. lost forty pounds in what eight months, uh, six months, twelve months? Uh, yeah, like eight to ten. It hasn't been a year yet. And maintained it. You look amazing, yeah, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, so. Uh, the the thing with the push-ups, it's also mental, right? Because it's some, it is not similar to 75 hearts. It was like, oh, yeah, it's kind of like 75 hearts. I'm like, no. 75 hearts, no alcohol, gallon of water, 10 pages, not one but two workouts, like yeah. not even comparable. But the fact that like doing it every single day, Monday through Sunday, some days you don't want to. Some days you forget. Some days you don't feel good. Some right. days you're sore. Some days you're out of town. But the fact is, and we've had, what, at least six people – Fail, drop fail out. or yeah. drop out, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, dude, it's a hundred pushups. Like the way that's the way I see it. I'm like, dude, do ten pushups every hour, every hour. Set a timer. Hey Siri, every hour, you know, remind me to do ten pushups, right. and you do that. And so, in, in a twenty four hour time frame, you sleep for eight. You have, wow, really bad math. Sixteen hours, right, to do a hundred pushups, right? Yeah. And so that's why I say, but doing it every single day religiously without fail is where. I also do it for, for physical. Like you've also, I mean, yeah. my, my upper body has changed drastically and it's bugging me. How, how long ago was that? Can't freaking find it. It was mid August. I think it was. I don't know how many days. Oh. It's been, a, it's been at least a handful of weeks. Has it been a month? Uh, you didn't, we didn't do it while you were in, in, in Alaska. I went, when did I go to Alaska? Anyway, I couldn't find it up because everybody posts the videos. So I was going back through the thread and there's like hundreds and hundreds of videos because you have to post at least a, a, a group of push-ups every time you do it. And then every time you do them, you have to note in there that you do them. But anyways, so the reason why I did it with our team is I want people, this goes for anybody. This goes if you're, if you're married, if you have a spouse, if it's yourself, your business owner, uh, if you have kids, it doesn't matter. Uh, caught, not taught, right? Our kids see us going to the gym. Our kids see us working out. Our kids see us doing push-ups. Cash literally said, hey, dad, will you give me $1,000? If I do push-ups, and I was like, no. But I actually did agree with him that I would do give him five hundred bucks. Probably if he did fifty push-ups every day, and he's literally hasn't failed yet. Yeah, yeah. I think thirty-seven days in is what we're at. So thirty-seven days in. But so, I think it was like, didn't somebody figure out that it would be fourteen thousand push-ups by the end of the year? It's one hundred forty days total. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever that yeah. minus the end of the year. So yeah. So we, we're for lack of better words, thirty to forty days in. So we've done th- uh, three to four thousand push-ups. Like that's cool. Like three to four thousand sounds exhausting and daunting. But if you just do a little bit every single day, like it's a huge, huge turnaround, right? Yeah. Like eating healthy. You don't have to like be a rabbit for the rest of your life, but like eat healthy most of the time, right? Work out most days. Not you don't do it every day. I work out every day just because it's mentally a, a a huge relief for me. But it, it start somewhere. But I didn't say do a thousand push-ups. Right. Now I am offering another thousand dollars if you do. 200 every day in September, 300, or sorry, we're in September, 200 in October, 
300 in November and 400 a day in December. If they go in the increments and they increase it, another thousand bucks. Because I want to see like these whoever it is can get yoked. And there's about what a dozen, not a dozen, about ten people on there, right? Yeah. So we'll see who can who can do that or who wants to do that. But it's just it's really just pulling you out of your comfort zone, right? right. <laughs> Before we press record, she walked in. I'm like, get out of my chair. She's like, nope, not today. And I'm like, you're putting me in my, out of my comfort zone. She's like, good. It's about time somebody did. And she's like, good. You deserve Gotta it. Gotta mix it up. Yeah. And so like it's it is it's it's just weird, but. Um, so that's, that's what it comes down to. But there's so many, like I said, caught, not taught, having the kids see it, your, your body changing. I know there's some sort of mental piece there for me as well, too. It's like, make sure that you do them because you, you committed to something. Right. I feel like, and I'm, I've been, I'm a hypocrite while I'm saying this, but I'm trying to do way better is for several years of our marriage, I would say I'm going to do something and I wouldn't do it. Um, and I would just say it to please you. Yeah, I'll do this. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do this. Yeah, I'll do that. And then I'm like. I'm never going to do that thing. Like, <laughs> or I, I flat had, out just don't want to. Oh, or yeah, I like, yeah. I have zero desire to do this, but I said yes. Or there is 0.0, .0 chance of me getting home at this time. Yeah, babe, I'll be home at this time. And I'm like, look at my calendar. I'm like, unless I'm Superman, and I can get home in like 30 seconds. Is not going to freaking happen? Right. And I did it for years over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm like, dude, I need to stop pleasing people instead of saying no. And guess what? Nobody or died. Even straight up, like, I don't want to. Like, it's hard to hear, and I get annoyed. I hate saying that, though. I know, and I get annoyed, but, like, I'd rather you just say that than set unrealistic expectations. For the past, like, year or so, I've been way better saying, like, no. Yeah. Like, or, or I, and I don't do it to be a dick. I don't right. do it to, like, disrespect her. She's like, will you do this? Can you go do this? Can you make this happen? Said, no. No. Like, I, I cannot commit to that because I can't promise you that I can fulfill it. Right. That's and that's like a life lesson. But like I said, it's been it's been years, like years and years and years, where I did that. And finally, uh, one of it goes back to some of you guys might know a story, but um, promising cash a dirt bike ride, <laughs> right? Or playing downstairs, uh, playing soccer or football down, yeah. playing catch downstairs, and that was like a huge thing. And to me, it's like, oh, don't do it tonight. But dude, how many hundreds of uh, dirt bike rides have we gone on, right? A lot. Like a lot, yeah. like a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> Fun fact: I bought that dirt bike a year ago. I've, it has never touched dirt except for once, but it has hundreds of miles in Power Ranch. Oh, I was, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. like it's, I've never taken it to the dunes yet, right. and I haven't, um, and it's never been like trail. I took with the kids out just like little putt putting, but like I've never like, hey, let's go, like right. I've never done it, but it's gotten hundreds of hours with Nixon. Right. Oakley and Cash. Remy doesn't care for it really. She'll do it every once in a while. She doesn't Noah, like anything. Noah loud. care less. Yeah. But um, going back to that, like the promises I would make to cash and I would say, hey, not tonight, buddy, I'm tired. Not tonight, you're tired. Uh, not tonight, you made a bad choice. And Heidi called me out and I, it's a love-hate relationship when she calls me out and holds me accountable, but it works and it's helped me become a better man and a better dad and, and father and husband. Um, so thank you. But she'd be like, dude, you made a freaking promise to cash that you would ride a dirt bike with him. You take him on a dirt bike ride. Yeah. It didn't say, you didn't say if it's before or after 8.30 right. or if you're tired or if he's tired. Like sometimes I would even just like get distracted or he would get distracted or he'd literally fall asleep, right? And the next morning he'd be like, dad, you didn't take me on a dirt bike ride. I'm like, you fell asleep. And Heidi's like, you didn't like, it doesn't matter. You had an opportunity to. Right. And he fell asleep. Now that's a little different, but like if I don't want to because I'm tired, norm I used to use that as a consequence. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go on a dirt bike ride. Uh, and then randomly he'll be a turd. the first thing you'd take away. It was the first thing yeah. i take away. And Heidi's like, dude, stop taking it away. Like you promised him that, go freaking do it. And I feel like I've gotten way better, especially the past six months or so, um, or even year. But like if he says we're going to do it, we're going to go do it. And right. I've like gotten up like, I'd be not butt naked, but I'd be like ready to go to bed in pajamas. And and he's like, dad, can we go on a dirt bike ride? And I'm like, yes, yes, we can. Let's go do it. And I have zero desire and I'm tired or I'm mad or I'm busy or I got something to do or, or I'm not dressed for it or whatever. Right. Or it's 109 degrees outside at 10 PM. And it's just like a wave of, it's like sitting in a microwave with a fan on. Well, and I feel like last night there was almost a sense of relief for you. Yes. Because he asked you and you said you would. And then he got comfortable and was watching a show. And he's like, Dad, I'm tired. We don't have to go tonight. And I could see it on your face because you were like, Hallelujah. 
Yeah. Because it's not, I mean, and it's not always a bad thing, right? But like once everyone winds down, you're like, oh crap, I did promise that. And sometimes it is a little annoying to go and do it after. Oh, oh it totally is. But it's my favorite when I leave you guys you come the back. Kids. Yeah. And there's times where Cash is like, Mom, we almost died. Mom, we ramped this curb. Mom, like and and it's just funny because it's one of his favorite things to do and it's a way for you guys right. to connect. So like that's why I was on your case of like, no, you said you'd do it, you need to do it because it matters to him. You know? So. Well, and that goes that goes into everything, right? And like I've had to work on that with Dory. She's like, Will you do this and this? Yeah, Dory, not a problem, I'll do it. And she's like, No, you're not. And I'm like, Excuse me. And so I have had to learn that too. It's it's not just with you and just right. with the kids. It, it's it's something internally where like I hate telling people no. Um, but I've learned that if I tell people no, they actually respect me more. I don't overwhelm myself because I personally like and not Kobe Bryant itself, but just the fact of like I could be dead tomorrow. So I want to go a hundred miles an hour always because I never know what my last day is gonna be. Right. Right. I could be going home on the sixty or the two oh two and get T boned, get rear ended. You know, drunk driver could hit me, you know, coming home. Uh, somebody could shoot me while I'm on my walk. Whatever. I don't know. I'm not getting weird, but like, you know what I mean? Like those type of things can happen. So I don't know what my last day is. So I don't I don't want to be on my deathbed or be dead and be like, I should have gone on that date. I should have gone on that dirt bike ride. I should have done that workout. I should have listened to that, read that book or whatever. Right. And so that's kind of the thing with me is I don't, that's what, that's what I'm always going hundred miles an hour and like, slow down. I'm like, no, speed up. <laughs> like, you know, I don't have any regrets when I die. So I want to make sure that I'm trying to serve as many people as I can, including my wife and my kids and, um, and go out with a bang. Right. But I think what like some of us have tried to help you realize though, is that in that process, you were letting people down totally. unintentionally, right? Because you can't be everywhere all the time. And so there were people falling through the cracks. And I think that was a point that some of us were trying to make to you is I would rather you just say, no, I can't than for you to say yes and then me be dependent, depending on you to be somewhere when you said you'd be there and you not show up because that letdown is harder to take than you to say no right away. Right. You know? Right. And and even just last week, you asked me to do something on Wednesday and I said, yeah, I'll do it. I didn't even have their phone number and <laughs> nor did I have time like allocated to do it. And so it was a legit conversation, so it couldn't be distracted. Yeah. Right. And I was like, yeah, yeah I'll do it. Not a problem. And then the next day she's like, did you do it? And I'm like, oh shit, and making it happen. I had every intention of doing it, but not when I told her I would. And that's the thing is like, I feel like I have good intentions to go do something, but then I don't communicate when I plan on doing it or when I can, when I can commit to doing it. And I should have said, yeah, I'll do it by Friday. Yeah. What does that do? That gives me the whole trash can Space. story. I have yeah. said the trash can story a hundred times from stage and, and on podcasts and stuff. But like, you remember, you know, um, she'll be like, Hey, will you uh, take the trash out? And I'm like, uh, sure. And then sure enough, 9, 9.30, Heidi goes out, you know, pissed off, rawr, taking the trash to the street, come inside, like, don't talk to me, I'm mad at you. And I'm like, what the hell is your problem? Like, you said you take out the trash. And I'm like, I did. Like, that was four hours ago. That was at four o'clock or five o'clock or six o'clock. It's been hours and you haven't done it. And I've been doing other things. And, I was, yeah. and I'm like, you're right. And so it was, it was just a miscommunication of like, oh, well, you go do it. Cool. Well, you didn't say when. And so that's what I've learned is, and you've learned too, is like deadlines and timelines. Yeah. Hey, well... Well, hey, take out the trash before you go to bed. So if I go to bed, if I choose to go to bed when I want to go to bed and it's 11.15, guess what I'm doing at 11.14? Trashes are going out. Or when I have, you know, it might be at 9 or 10 o'clock or whatever. Um, but when there's that communication, that open communication of like, hey, make sure you do it before you <clears throat> before you leave for the day, right. right? Or before you go to bed or before this or that, or hey, uh, you know, by, by the end of the day, Friday or whatever. And that goes for, um, for kids stuff. That goes for you and I stuff right? Whether it's ordering flights or buying tickets for something, we have those conversations. And, um, and I feel like that really, it just sets people up to, there's like a, a, a internal timer for me. It's like, Oh, I got to get it done. And sometimes I can be proactive and sometimes I can't. Right. Right. But either way I know internally, like if just like the pushups, right. It's like, I didn't say the pushups have to be done. Uh, you know, 25, when you wake right. up 25 right. before the call, 25 at lunch, 25 at dinner and boom, you're done piece of cake and you can enjoy your night. Not at freaking ten fifteen where you're throwing on a hoodie and you're like, I go Angry. to I go to I go to massage her or uh, or put my hand down her back and it's like sweaty and glampy and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what did you what have you been doing the past ten minutes? So I did to do hundred push ups. I'm like oh that's gross, Ew. right? <laughs> I was giving her crap. That was but a little drastic. A little drastic, but, but it was also true. 
Uh, yes or no? It happened yesterday. Doesn't make it any less true. <laughs> it doesn't make it any less true. But um, but that's so having those like the hundred push-ups. I didn't say when you had to have them done before before you go to bed, and you might pull an all nighter, or you might you know be up till late and doing whatever you want. But setting those time frames and those time restrictions. So that is our episode about push-ups <laughs> and why they're awesome. Um, I have Aww. a question for you. Yeah, sure. What do you love Shoot. most about me? Just in general? Sure. Across the board? Yeah, in general. In yeah. family? In, yeah. um, I love... Let's do, let's do three. I'm no, not like, no, you said oh, one. Okay. What I love most ah, about... I only get, you I'm only, only get, committed to you one. You only get one. No. Um, I was going to think like as a, as a dad, as a husband, and as a business owner, like what are the three things? Because I want to do that to you. You want to do it to me? Yeah. Oh, um, well, I love your passion for whatever you're doing. Like it doesn't, if you set your mind to something, um, you generally, I mean, for the most part, there's a few things you'll do, even if you don't want to, but like for the most part, you do things you're incredibly passionate about. And I love that. I love to see you in your element, like speaking, talking to people, like you thrive in that space. And I love that about you. I don't necessarily, um, but I still enjoy watching you do it because that's something that you love. Um, as far as parenting in, in the dad space, I've loved watching you grow over this last year. Like when you, you've humbled yourself to be softer with the kids and to really hear and see them. And I think it's taken a little while because there's been like this idea that, you know, I'm the dad, whatever I say goes. And, it's been cool to watch you soften and kind of hear their need more and be compassionate towards them. And, you know, with the dirt bike ride thing, before it was dirt bikes, it was, will you play catch? Mm -hmm. And, you know, Cash would be acting out or having a hard time, and he would just, and he'd only ask you one time, and if you said no, he'd let it go. But it was, Dad, can we play catch? And if you were mad, you'd say no. And it took a handful of conversations between you and me where I'm like, he is reaching out to connect with you. Like, he's not going to ask you. They're kids. They're not going to say, hey, can we have a talk? Hey, dad, right. you hurt my feelings. Hey, dad, whatever. It's going to be like, can you please connect with me in this way? And so I feel like as you've seen it from that perspective and started to respond to it more, um, I've watched your relationship with the kids grow and get better, um, which has been really, it's been really cool for me to see. Um, there's days that I get kind of frustrated because they only want me. You're louder and not necessarily in a negative way all the time, but like you're just a louder human than I am, right? And so sure. sometimes they just, they want me more. They have to be touching me. They have to be by me, whatever. And and I've asked, I'm like, can you please like find a way to be softer so that they want you a little bit too? And I feel like that's starting to happen. Like mm -hmm. we've made that turn. Have you felt that? Oh, yeah. you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're still the favorite. Like, you come well, home, mom's yeah, home, but, and all of a sudden, dad's trouble ever. But when you're gone, like... But I'm with them all the time. <clears throat> right. But I've also had, like, moments where I can really connect with them. And I've had an opportunity to, and I haven't, like, it's the opportunity has always been there. But I haven't taken advantage of it. Or, like, having those one-off conversations or those one-off little, little like, dad, can I drive the golf cart? I'm like, dude, no. And then I would do it. And then Oakley would give me a hug and say, thank you, dad. Yeah. You know, type deal. And so just like, like I said, I don't want to have my kids in their teen years, like, and from podcasts and reels and from what you've heard, like you really only get a handful of years with your kids right? before it goes south, Bef not south, before they, before, you're no longer their number one priority. Yeah. Other people are more important Yeah, because they'll and get so, to an age where it's friends and then they'll get married and it'll be yeah. their spouse and their families. Well, and I, and I want to be not the fun dad, but I want to be the dad that has a relationship to where like when they want to go on a trip, hey, dad, will you take us to blank? Instead of like, my dad doesn't go anywhere. My, right. And there's a lot of examples. I'm not going to name names, obviously, on here. There's a lot of examples where um, football practice, uh, the, the flipping, the pool. I see dads sitting there talking like buddies of mine sitting there talking and there's two or three dads and they will not get in the water. Yeah, They won't interact with their kids. And I jump in and I have 15 kids jumped on me, want to play with me, want to do this and that. Right. And I'm like, I never want to be that dad that gets caught just sitting in the lawn chair. There's time and a place for everything. Right. But I feel like that's, and that's why you hate going there because when you go there, you know, you're going to get mauled 
But like, I know that the time for me to sit in the lawn chair and to relax on the beach is on, is on vacation with my wife. Right. But when you take the kids there, you all like want to go sit and sunbathe. I'm a huge sunbather. I love just sitting and catching some vitamin D. But I like I can't do that with kids. They just know right. when they're they they know like dude dad's dad's gonna play with us. Dad's gonna play with us, right? Yeah. And I I as as we go from the <clears throat> the two to eight year old phase to like the eight to sixteen year old phase, and we're starting to do the the fall trips and the spring breaks and the going to California and going to Mexico and Rocky Point and all that kind of stuff. I want to, I want them to know that I will take them anywhere and be present with them. And that's something that I've tried really hard to, because I really, really sucked at it. And it took you years to like beat my head with a two by four, but it worked Yeah. to be present with them and to be intentional with them. But like, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm like, I have, I, there's people always say, that's why, <laughs> This is why this is why Heidi hates Christmas and season time. The next three months, Heidi she doesn't hate it. It's just right. very hectic because I want to do all the things. Oh yeah, yeah. This this one's awesome. All the I things. Was like where are you going? Schnapp Farms twenty times. We're going to the Princess. We're doing Polar Express. We're doing the Grand Canyon experience. Whatever it's called, like all no, those things. Cool. Uh, Vertugio Farms and whatever you know, Mother's Farm thingy. Can I put a disclaimer of why I hate them though? Prior to last year, it's true. I had to plan all of those things, yeah. buy ticket, and literally like get everybody ready and show up to the place with all of the kids, and you just met us there. Yeah, and then you got to be like fun. Let's go on the rides. Let's do all these things, and I'm like stressed out because I had to feed everybody. I had to make sure we had everything packed sure, sure. for everything. Like you never. You wanted to do all the things, but you didn't want to help with like planning and getting us there. You just wanted to like, hey, I'll meet you there at 530 when I get off work. And I'm like, so like last year, maybe the year before that is when that kind of shifted. And so it is easier now to do it because now it's like, oh, we're going at five. I'll be home at four to help feed everyone and get them ready. And then it's not all of that burden and weight on me. So this this is a huge life lesson for those listening because I'm. I'm already doing this. So this is just me telling you guys, but just reiterating to me is Heidi had a huge problem where I wasn't helping, like even going to church, like I'd wake up, I would maybe feed the kids, maybe not. And then I would get dressed. And then magically the other three or four kids would get dressed on their own. And we'd hop in the car and, and go to church. And this chick's mad at me all day. And I'm like, what the freak is your problem? And she's like, dude, I did everything and got myself ready. And I'm like, she's like, you got yourself ready. High five. Yeah, and I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, no, yeah, uh, -huh, uh no, mm, no. Or like, I make breakfast, and that was it. And she's like, you still didn't help the five kids. Right. You're zero for five. So I literally have a tally, like uh, on in internally. I'm dead serious, right? Because I realize I'm like, okay, being very, very, this is raw and real, right? Like, if I want my wife to love me and have more sex with me, and like be on good terms, right? Then I should not like do what she says, but like find out what what her frustrations are via me and fix them. And I'm like, well, what are they? And that was that was a huge common denominator, right? Well, and take things off my plate that you're capable of doing because that's the other right. thing is it's like just because I'm home and I do them most of the time doesn't mean that I have to do those things all of the time. Right, and so getting ready for like getting ready for church or like going out, like going, going to a place, right? And it's not I have to do everything so she does nothing. But like for date night that I realized, and this was, I think it was Sean and Sachs that said this, um, but like going on date night, like we did it for a long time and she'd be pissed at date night. I'm like, what is your freaking problem? She's like, I got, I got all the kids bathed. I got all of them fed. I got all of them in their pajamas. Right. And, and I had to shower and I had to get ready. And the hour before date night, she's like high emotions and she's just pissed off and mad. So we go on date night and I'm like, hey, you should be like getting in the mood. This is awesome. Like so they have a good night, right? Maybe get a little lucky afterwards. And she's like, pound salt. And I'm like, where's the disconnect? And so, I, and this took me years, by the way. So save yourself years, um, <laughs> right? And, and going to bed frustrated. Like it was, well, can I help the kids get ready for bed? Right. Can I help get a sitter lined up? She's like, I'm always doing the sitter. I'm always doing the sitter. I'm always doing the sitter. Now, I just like we did this past weekend, I picked the place. Uh, we went shooting and we went to dinner. I set up all that, got the reservations for all that. But like I went and I went and picked up pizza. I went and helped out with the kids to a degree for baths and or pajamas. 
right? When you took them swimming, so I could get ready. Oh, that's uh, so that's I did on purpose. So that's another thing. So when you go the, for the guys, right? This is the, I learned. This is a trick I learned. So take the kids away before you have date night, so your wife can get ready by herself. Now, if you have older kids, not relevant. But with younger kids that just want to mom, 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 and they want to bug her, all she wants to do is get in the shower, not be used, not get, not get touched. She wants to go get dressed and put her makeup on and curl her hair, and she'll even actually dress a little sexier and spend a little more time on her when she's not having kids yank on her. And and yes or no? Yeah, no, it's true. Right? Because when they're all over me, I'm like, oh my gosh, let's just get out of here, and I'll put my hair in a bun and go if it means getting yeah, out of the sports house. Yeah, sports bra and, and yoga <laughs> pants, and I'm like, oh man, I was like, I was hoping for a little bit like more sexy, but but it's like. But the same thing, it's like going up to that, what did I do to help? What did I yeah. do to contribute? And that goes, like I said, even for like family dinners, it goes for, uh, you know, going out of town. I, I sucked at that. That's another big one. These are all the same thing, but just in different <laughs> categories. Um, going out of town, yeah. right? I'd be like, I'd pack my bag and be like, okay, let's go. And we'd go into Alaska for three or four days. And she's like, you know, sweating and frustrated and ready to go freaking beat the hell out of somebody. And that somebody's me. And I'm like, what is your problem? We're literally going on vacation. We're going to the princess. We love going to the princess. She's like, why? I was like, what is your freaking problem? Yeah. And she'd be like. Packing for six people. She's like, I pack six people. How much did you pack for? And I'm like, uh, zero, but I have to pack for at least me, right? <laughs> I'm like, I still have to pack for my one. Oh, yeah. And so, but that's the other thing too, is I still hate packing for the kids. And she has her own little OCD way of doing it. So what do I do? I, I will either go do like all the household type stuff that she would normally be doing, whether it's from dishes, getting the house cleaned up, ready to go laundry or get the kids out of the house. So you can do that because yeah. you can do it way faster. The kids aren't trying to yeah. pull shit out Pack of the, their 9,000 stuffies that yeah, have to go everywhere. <laughs> and that's a thing, right? But it's a real thing. And so yeah. I've realized, and so that's, that's taken very hard, frustrating conversations between you and I yeah. over the years. But I realized that I'm like, hey, what if I take the kids away for an hour and we go to the pool or we go to the splash pad or we go, uh, go, go to Circle K or go on a walk or go to the park or something while she does that? It, I didn't say, I'm going to go pack for six people. You don't want me to do that because Oakley's... We'll get, we'll get there and they'll have mismatched shoes. Oh, dude, and- there, you got one shoe. You have no socks. Everybody's going commando for a week. It's bad. Like, you don't like... And why are we bringing parkas when it's 114? Right. I don't know because... Just in case. Just in case it rains or snows in July. But like, and so it's not my jam. And so that's, but that's communication that her, that you and I have had. And to realize like, Hey, like I'm still willing to pack everybody, but I don't want to pack and still have to be like in charge of everybody while I'm packing. I'm like, cool. So let's go do that. Or like, Hey, go do date night. Cool. I'm down for date night, but like going up to date night, like make me feel sexy, make me feel wanted, make me feel like I can enjoy myself and then go on date night. Right. Instead of like, I, I, I can countless, countless times. Where I remember you getting dressed last second, bun and hot dog, chicken nuggets, whatever, bull crap stuff. And I'm in there. I took a shower. Nobody bothered me. I'm getting dressed. I got the deodorant. I got the clone brushing the teeth. And I'm like, let's do this date night. And I'm like, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> and you're like, you asshole. And I'm like, there's not enough Botox to fix it. It's RBF. I'm right. Sorry. No, no, but it's, but it's not the RBF. It's literally like, I know. You didn't do jack shit for the past hour to help get ready. There's like a pre-day night, and then there's date night, and there's post-day night. And if you want post-day night to go well, you want to make sure you have a good date night set up and take care of pre-day night. Yes or no? Yeah. She laughs, and it's awkward, but it's funny. And it's true. It doesn't make it any less true. But like, so that, so from when it comes to vacation, at least with this is what works with us, right? And we just try and share that stuff with you guys, is like date night, church. Um, I already said date night. Uh, vacations right? Going out of town, uh, going and doing things that require like the pregame stuff, right? Like pre pre going, make that be, be a solution and be an, be an asset and not a liability. Well, and realistically, I feel like some people don't know where to help or how to help if they've been doing it a certain way for a really long time. So ask like, what would be helpful for you? Like, how can I help you get us ready? Like, or, or acknowledge, like, I understand you do this by yourself a lot, but I would like to be home and help because I can be. Because you've said that to me a few times. Like, I can't always be there to help you get ready. But when I can, like, what would you like me to do? And, I've all, and I feel like I've done better at this, but, like, also communicating, like, hey, 
we're gonna go to Schnuff Farms. I can't help you. Just right. because, it, it, in my opinion, it's all has to do with like the mental, the mental toughness or the mental capacity of like. I need you to mentally commit to being ready to take care of all the kids, get them all ready, and then meet you here. Not because yeah. I don't love you, not because I don't want to, but because of this meeting or 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 right. driving or this and that, it's not going to work. But if it's your idea to go that place, I feel and I and you've genuinely gotten better. But like, I don't mind planning it. But like, it's really nice to hear because your day you can plan for the most part, right? right. And you right. can decide when you come home. So right. if you tell me you want to go to Schnepp Farm. Like, hey, that day that we go, I what time would you like me to be home? Or I can be home at four if we're going to leave at five. Or, you know, and make that decision for you. Like right. you make it on your own that I'm going to be home an hour early to help with that right, stuff. Right. Because that's the other thing is I don't want to have to ask every time. Because then sure. I feel more like your mom. Right. Instead of like we're parenting together. Like you have eyes too. You know what needs to happen for sure. us to get a whole circus of seven people out the door. Sure, sure. So you and and I think you've realized that more oh, as we've had the huge, talks. huge eye opener for me. Yeah, like being home thirty minutes or an hour earlier when we're going to go do something to be able to help out has been huge because yeah. it's it's a stress reliever for you to where like I have to do you have to take care of yourself and all the kids and get them out instead of like okay. Where is there any relief there? No, there's not. Right. Sometimes there's not. Right. Like you go to town by yourself with kiddos, like, yeah. High five. Good luck. Well, do you remember that one time I went and did a hotel stay for one night by myself? You'd gone on a, like to a conference or whatever. And I went and I stayed in Fountain Hills for one night sure. and I met you at church the next Sunday. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yes. And I remember showing up and I beat you to church and you had made a comment. And I think a couple other people in the ward that were like, you're glowing or, you know, like some comment about how yeah. I looked relaxed and happy. Yeah. Did and your hair, like, did your makeup? I was like, well, of course I do because I didn't have to get anybody ready. I literally just showed up. I'm like, no wonder Jason looks so happy at church every Sunday. Dude. But like we've, we've since shared that and it, and it is, yeah. it's a lot and I, and I do it every day. I don't, it's not that I hate doing it. It's just that I enjoy getting help and, and help that I don't have to ask for. Like for right. you to be aware enough to see it. Well, there's three phases of that, nice right? Too. So there's the, I'm going to do it anyways because he's not going to do it and now I'm pissed and I'm just going to do it because it's easier instead of asking him or fighting him. That's phase number one. Phase number two, this is just like real life experience here, right? Phase number two was um, asking me to help. And so there's like, hello, like open your freaking eyeballs. Like right. I'm here, hello. Or, you know, well, you know, we're going to the same place and you know, it requires a jacket and bibs and, and gloves and whatever, or right. it requires swimsuits and sunscreen and towels and blah, blah, blah. And then the third phase that I'm in right now that I'm still trying to be consistent at, and I'm, th there's always the exception to the rule or I'm not, you know, I'll drop the ball every once in a while. But m that third phase is being proactive and like when you're going to go somewhere, when you're going to go do something, even if it's like going to an event for one of the kids at the school, it's what do you need? Okay, all the kids, make sure the littles have their diapers changed, make sure everybody's dressed, make sure you have shoes. If you're going outside once 115, make sure everybody has water. Right. And then, and then get them in the car. Like that's something that any person with zero skill set can do. Right. Right. Well, and did and, they eat? And it still needs to happen. Yeah. Did they, yeah. Did they eat? Yeah. Do we need, do we have snacks? Do we need snacks? Are we going to eat there? Those type of things. Yeah. And so that's what it comes down to. So hopefully that helped. Appreciate you. Love you. I'm going to, let's do this again. I'm going to do my three because we're out of time. Cause then I got to go grab the kiddos, but I want you to, yes or no? Uh, kind of, I kind of want to hear your three. Okay. I'll do my three. Can you Is that do cool? your three in under 10 minutes? Yeah, when do you leave? I only okay. did two. You need 10 minutes? I got yeah. 10 minutes? Yeah. Two, oh, two, five. Okay, let's do it. So, my three. So I only gave you two. Is that okay? That's fine. I asked you for three and you gave me two. That's, that's cool. I'm not mad. I'm not but hurt. I'm going to give you three. So, because I like mom, spouse, and then on the business side. Okay. Did you give me three? I thought you gave me three. No, but it's okay. No. Yeah, you did. Okay. No, you didn't. How dare you? <laughs> True love right there. 66% of the time, she does it every time. <laughs> um, so as, as a mom, <laughs> as a mom, I love that my kids are crazy about you. As a mom, I love that you, you, we actually had a conversation where she didn't want to have kids. Remember that? I do. She didn't want to have kids. Freaking four kids later, four and, a, four and a four and a plus one. Was scared to ruin their lives. Yeah. So the, but the fact that, like, the amount of sacrifice 
there, in my opinion, there's no sacrifice bigger than giving up your body and your life to bring a human into the world. Like that's next level, like sacrifice and selflessness. But like, for lack of better words, I was talking to somebody about starting a, doing a solar, uh, a solar, a softball team, right? Mm -hmm. And doing like a co-ed softball team. And um, I was like, oh yeah. I was like, I already played softball. I played baseball. We'd love to do it. It'd be awesome. We haven't done it for like almost a decade, almost our entire marriage. We did it in the very beginning. Yeah. For like a year or two, and then we stopped because I was like, yeah, she's been pregnant for the past eight years. Yeah. I think I played <laughs> pregnant once, and I got hit in the eye, or like in the face. A pitch came back at me. Yeah. I was like, I think this is time yeah, to hit you, hit you in the stomach, and yeah, kid has a unicorn horn or something. Um, but like that, but like going all in in motherhood, like I see a lot of moms that don't want to do that, and I see a lot of people like, I'm going to have one kid. Like, screw that, F that, or I don't want to, you know – there's a lot of reasons, but I see it almost like they're selfish. I'm not saying if you have less than two kids, you're selfish, but the the just kind of seeing people and talking. When I say I have five kids and how many do you have, and it's zero or one or two or whatever, um, or it's also five, I just see like it requires forever for the rest of your life. It's going to require time and energy and sacrifice on your behalf because you chose to make that decision. Right. Right. And none of our kids were surprise babies. Truly. Right. Yeah. Um, we knew we were going to have either four or five, right? Right, Just you and I combined or together, but, um, like just going all in. Cause I was talking about like being all in and how I've like recommitted to us and our marriage and our relationship and like being all in, um, like you've always been all in as a mom. Hmm. Like in the beginning, you didn't like, you were kind of like, Oh, but once you went in, like there wasn't, you've never like, you've never really doubted yourself. Right, like postpartum is a real thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, um, for the first two kiddos, but um, just really embracing like what being a mom and fulfilling those motherly duties and being that maternal like badass. Yeah, like it's a real thing, and that's something that it's it's very very attractive. It's sexy as all get out um, when you see an, an amazing mom and just go walk into any room in a matter of minutes if their kids are with them. I can tell who's who's put in the work yeah. and who's put in the time. Almost like at the gym, like you can see which moms have the six pack of like a mom, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, as a as a spouse, I underestimated how freaking the badassery of you. I underestimated. It. I don't know. Um, I just as a spouse, I I absolutely love going on trips with you. I think it's the it's the funnest two, three, five days of my life. Every time we get to do it, you know, the two, three, four times a year we get to, like I look forward to those. And it's just you and me. Love the kids. No offense. Right. Love the business. No offense. But like just you and me, just like having us time. Most of the most time somewhere with the beach. Yeah. But like that's that is like something I will cherish forever. And I know we haven't we didn't do it for the first several years because we were broke. Um and, and we're having babies. And so it was crazy. But of that fact that you have also made it a priority now, because before it wasn't, it just, mm -hmm. in my opinion, it wasn't. Right. Um, but like making those because those trips are hard. You gotta have, you know, you gotta pawn off four or five, six kids or four or five kids to, uh, to one or several people. Right. You have sports, you have games, you have schools and it's, it's, it's mentally exhausting for you. Yeah. To me, to draw, I don't even blink. To draw schedules and schedules and, and just, you know, just asking people to do that. It's tough, right? right? Even if you're compensating them, it's still just tough. Um, but the, the, the unwavering support that you've been to me when I thought you were being a victim and you were being selfish Right. And you were, you were having, you were, you know, you were being that when in reality you were doing the exact opposite. And you were literally at some point, some point in time, you were just kind of dealing with me um, because I was being stupid and making bad choices and you didn't give up. And that's like massive for me. Um, Are we going to be able to do one of these where you don't cry? Nope. Probably not. <laughs> as long as you're in here. I've never cried with another person in here. Oh. <laughs> but, um, but, just the unwavering support because I know like your childhood and you're growing up and whatnot and you want to be, uh, Sean when talks about being radically supportive. Right. And I feel like you've always done that. I've always, you've, you've done it, but I've chosen not to see it because of my ego. And now that I see, it, I see it now more than ever. And I'm like, dude, I was like, you guys all need a Heidi. Like, you want to get married? Like, here you go. Like, ta -da. right. And I truly mean that because <clears throat> it's not perfect. Right. We fight, we fight all the time. We fight, almost on a daily basis, but it's, it's a good fight and it's a fight worth fighting for. Yeah. And to that, I thank you. It's not giving up on us and mm -hmm. on me. Um, 
And then on the business side of things, like I've said it to your face, you've never owned a business. Uh, you've never been a business owner and you don't know what it's like. And that's a really fucked up thing to say, by the way, those that are listening, uh, don't ever do that. Um, he's lucky he's still married. But <laughs> it, but it, it, even though it's true, yeah. it's, it's, it's still the point of like, you like, I don't know what you're going through as a mom. You don't know what I'm going through as a business owner. Right. And it's not a dig. It's just facts. Right? right. The fact that the the amount of stress and responsibility and liability that I am on my hands to make sure that a hundred thousand dollars gets put into a bank account that gets distributed to eighty different employees every week. Right. Apart from literally doubling that for suppliers and doubling that for you know Big Ben and others, it's um having that trust. It just is knowing that like you, you said it before, like I could sell ice to Eskimos, right? Or sand to Saudi Arabians or whatever. But like the 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 fact is is that you I wouldn't have let you anyways, but the fact that you not only let me, you supported me and have encouraged me to like pursue my dreams, like doing this, a podcast, right. having a consulting business, right. those type of things. Um and, and the entrepreneurial game, right? From State forty eight from day one is like that's very few people do it and very few people even even fewer people are successful at it. But like having someone like you in my back corner to know that like, I'm never going to fail. I'm never going to fail our family. Like I'm never going to quit. I'm going to fail. It's going to happen. Like I'm going to mess right. up. I'm going to mess up. Crap's going to happen, but I'm never going to let our family down. And that you knew that that vehicle or vehicles would allow us to live the life that we want to have. Like that's been, that's been huge because like you said before, Grant, Grant actually said this uh, on stage in front of Elena, he's like, I still, he's like, I'd still be a billionaire eventually. Right. He's like, and I, he, and don't forget, he didn't get married till he was like 45, maybe even 50. Um, but he's like, I was already successful. I was already a multimillionaire already had, you know, all kinds of stuff before I met Elena. But when I met her, when I got married to her, he's like, everything skyrocketed. Yeah. And I feel like that's been w huge with us too. Like I've been in the roofing game since before, you know, you and I met, but uh, going along that game and then and then being able to do it together while having starting a family and having a family right. has been a, a huge support system on the back end that you don't get a lot of uh, praise for, um, whether on stage. But that's why I, I bring it on this podcast because mm -hmm. I have people say, dude, that episode with Heidi was awesome, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I tell you, it's freaking awesome. But that's uh, but on the business side. So those three things. Thank you. I appreciate that. So And you are pretty lucky. I am pretty damn lucky. So, anywho, uh, those that are listening, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, don't forget to um, tell tell your spouse you love them. Go do something for them that you haven't done recently. Just something out of the blue, randomly. Go do something for them and uh, watch your life change and be uh, be a good example to others and serve others and help others. And um, yeah, just don't ever forget who your priorities are. It's you and God first, your spouse, your kids, and everybody, everyone, and everything else. Good. Yep. Adios. Be great.